I'm really interested to know about all your background. No one really focuses on that like, behind the scenes. I feel like the family topic would be really good because all of us come from different backgrounds. So yeah. like knowing your roots, basically. I feel like it's a great discussion. Only, only, only. Yeah, I'm sure that's the sweetest. That's Sweet. a perfect name, isn't it? The last few days have been really tough for me. When it gets too much, I walk around London and get lost in the buildings. It's like all my troubles are forgotten for the moment. George has been amazing, but I feel like speaking to someone closer to home will help me with how I'm feeling. What are you doing to your hair? I don't know what she's going to do, just cut it. I'm sick of it. Okay. Are we going to turn into studs? No, I don't, I don't, I don't want it like yours. <laughs> so how did the podcast go the other day, Pri? Um, yeah, it went really well. You know, everyone's got a different perspective of things. The way we dress and all of that as well. Oh, I want to see you in a frock. How did I know? <laughs> Just for me. You can't take drink for that talk there. Hell no. Mm -mm. So, what are they trying to do for the next podcast then? Basically, we're going to touch on family. So, so how, how are you going to feel? How deep are you going to go though? How deep? You know, I'm very open. You know, I've got a tune where I talk about everything already. You get yeah. me? So, but um, yeah, man, I think it'd be good. Obviously, I come from foster care myself. So I think it'd be nice. Like, a lot of people don't know. So how long was you in foster care, though? Since I was five. Literally, isn't it? Yeah, mm. five. Did you call your foster parents mum and dad? Nah. I called her nan out of respect. Okay. Oh, just an older she was woman. an older woman, yeah. Okay. So everybody, her original grandchildren, original, <laughs> called her nan. So we kind of just picked oh, yeah. up on that yeah. as a little kid as well. Oh, yeah. This is a one nan, oh, nan. But didn't feel like it was family. I'm like, when is my mum coming back? Seriously? Yeah, I didn't feel like, though. oh, we didn't grow up with hugs and stuff like that. But then you see, like, the other grandchildren getting more love, and it's just like, OK. It's made me stronger. Yeah. I feel like, um... That like shaped your character. Yeah, it's kind of made me who I am. I remember when I first invited you for Christmas and you looked at me so sideways, you was like... No, I don't do that hmm? stuff, man. Come to yours for Christmas. I, I like, don't do Christmas, nah. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember how Prue was when she first came around here? I don't really remember you being any way, really. It was just like, you came yeah. and you're one of mine now, you know? It's like, Literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really appreciate you as well. You know, even though I've been a bit shy and stubborn, to accept your love. You know your family when you get your own dressing gown with your name <laughs> on it, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Prue. Wavy, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not really ready for you to work me out today. Why? <laughs> everything, everything. <laughs> I need to get in shape for my next video, man. So maybe you need to cut down on the waffles. I don't eat waffles. <laughs> How was the Brits? It was so good. I made a statement and that's, that's what I wanted to do. Actually, I've got some pictures. Hey. So this is me. Wow. Yeah, actually, I love your outfit. <laughs> So we're gonna start off with burpees. You know what burpees look like, right? Let's go, let's go. There better not be any dog poo. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we go and sit down now? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you know I told you about that podcast that we did the other day? Yeah, how did that go? It was actually really good. It got like really passionate. This week I'm really, you know, we're gonna talk about family and okay. The idea of like, you know, not forgetting your roots and how your family has played a big part in like what you do now and you know how our family has determined my music. The crazy thing is, yeah. when you think about it, how many like Lebanese people, girls rap? 
mum and dad have definitely encouraged you to be creative. Yeah. So even like when, when you was irritating, making a lot of noise at home with your instrumentals and rapping when we yeah. wanted to watch TV, they didn't really stop you from doing that. I miss dad, man. Yeah, it's coming up to that time of the year, really. Um, dad brought us here in the first place, you know, God bless his soul, for a better life. Do you remember we stayed in that one room? It was me, you, this Mum, cramped. and Zane. Everyone's stepping on each other's toes. Yeah, and literally. babies crying everywhere. I don't remember that being a good time, but the best thing that could have happened to me was when I got put on Literate Way Estate. Yeah, that was good old days. That Proper. was, that really was. If it wasn't for the estate, I wouldn't have been part of nothing. Like For me, my identity comes from the grime scene. Like It does. I feel like I'm part of a culture, whereas you know, when we're coming, we're young, Lebanese, coming from Nigeria, trying to find our feet. We do even speak English. Then we get on an estate where everyone just welcomes you, yeah. doesn't matter where you're from. Like, it was like being back home. I'm just grateful that, you know, they pushed us, that like, made me stick to my education as well. Like, obviously I went to uni, I did my A-levels, went to uni. We, we all achieved well, me, yeah. you and Zane. Yeah. And you know mum and dad, they always wanted to be, me to be a neuropsychologist, which is why, I guess in the first place, I was teaching psychology and stuff. Yeah, you was really good at it, but then... But my question is, yeah. did, like, and be honest with me, did I let mum down by leaving my job? I think at the beginning, mum was really worried. Um, and like she was, she was just thinking like, why did Nargis just take that risk? But then mm. I think when you was given a reassurance as well, when she was listening to your music, mm. um, and then when you was consistent with mm. like releasing like song after song after song, she was like, wow, actually, my daughter is actually talented. I just want to give her the life that she deserves because I just feel like, you know, she's had her kids, her husband's died she was only yeah. with him for like 30 years and whatever you've always been like mum's rock like whatever she needs in life everything that i do everything that i do is for mum hello oh you downstairs all right then yeah just buzz up Here's the plant in. Two hours late. You Look, say you came to bring time. the plantain. The what? Plantain. 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 What kind of African are you? Plantain. I haven't seen you in a while. Like, oh, I know. What have you been up to though? Like it's music. Like, oh. Yeah, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to pattern my EP in it. Okay. But it's, it's, it's headache. This is my escape, man. Cooking is your escape. Yeah, man. I love cooking. Have you found a husband yet? Listen, it's coming. Ma you sound like my auntie. <laughs> Where is your marriage? I'm yeah. sure your mum, especially Congolese parents. Yeah. I'm sure they've probably been on you about like yeah. getting married. My mum's not happy, but she'll be happy when I, I reach the places I need to reach. You know? Okay. No, man, go sit down. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, no, nah, bro, go sit down, bro. Just one. Go sit. Go and sit down. I can't believe you're actually hey, serving she's us. coming to serve us, you know. Hey. You, know how, you know when you have your uncles and aunties coming over to your house? Nasty. You get me? Oh, are we uncles. getting being served by C. Kane? Brownie points for being my friends. Let me get us that. Let me get us that. Let me see. Brownie points for being my brethren, isn't it? <laughs> how are you getting on with the girls from the podcast? Mm -hmm. Well, we're cool, to be honest with you. Yeah, we're, we're, we're calm. You get along with them? Yeah, I wouldn't say I don't get along with them. From the last podcast, I think Laughter took one of something that I said to her that Swear. how um, I'm practically one of the man them. So wait, I don't get it. Why would she take it personally? Though? Maybe because um, I don't see myself as a part of the collective. She thinks that I don't see myself as part of the collective. I guess if it's irking her, mm. she'll talk. I feel like she will say something if it yeah. really, really is. So I was like saying before, like, what's going on? The relationships, dating, like. Do you know what? Yeah, me personally. I don't want to get in a relationship right now because I know how, how I am as a person. Okay. Like, when I get in a relationship, I put the person before, before me, if that um, makes sense. Yeah. So then music comes second, and it's something that I can't control. So that's why 
I don't want to be in a relationship because I know. <laughs> oh my god, sorry. Like I'm I just, soft. Come I'm on. Proper, you, do you know what's funny? Like yeah. because obviously you're more of a tomboy. Yeah, yeah. You're with the random, <laughs> like dress. I would just never have guessed that. I'm a soft. At all. Soft. At all. Soft. <laughs> like, I'm the softest of the softest. Do you feel under pressure? I don't feel under pressure because I know everything will be at God's time. You know, it's, it's, it's quite hard for me because obviously I, I want to do anything to make my mom happy, innit? Mm -hmm. But then it's like, I need to make myself happy as well and, and reach my goals, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, so doing the marriage and everything is all handy dandy and whatnot, but like, I'm not where I want to be musically. <laughs> I pray. Yes. Tell me about your love life, babes. The position I'm at right now, I can't have somebody serious. No one don't understand. And then I was just like, I'm wasting my time. Mm. So then I'll say if I get with a girl. They love the idea of it. And then when reality kicks in I'm and spending time I'm doing extra them. time at studio, yeah. they'll be like, I thought Or you shooting said. videos with other girls and stuff. Oh, We've had a few problems man. with that. All of that. Same thing, exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. I don't, I'm not really into the thing of being used either. Do you think, you think you're quite you? guarded? Who's going to use you? Girls, man. Yeah, but the kind of using they use you for, you like. What, <laughs> sex? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think I knew before you, though. You assumed? Yeah, assumed before you, but I like, in my heart, a heart. Yeah, because you used to be like, oh, watch when she comes out. Yep. Watch, watch, watch. And I used to get so offended. You're like, oh, Priya ain't did it yet. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and now there's no stopping you. Now You're catching up now. Catching up. <laughs> Overtaken. She is my teacher. <laughs> but you're going to have to settle down sooner or later, baby. No, nah, there's no rules to this. Everybody thinks you have to get married and have kids. Who said that? Why? Because I need grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> I need babies in my house. You know what it is? I'm not going to do this whole relationship thing just for a year just or two. For, yeah. It's going to actually be serious. If I get with somebody, it has to be 100%. Yeah, I'm not just going to bring anybody to your house. I refuse to. Because say if you like them and I don't like them tomorrow. <laughs> It's going to be beef. No. It's yeah. still talking to no, them and I'm no. not like, no, let's not. No, don't bring someone you don't like to my house. Yeah. Then, I, then they're going to like it and want to stay. Yeah, exactly. No. You've got the magnets. <laughs> they want to be our family. <laughs> <laughs> For years it was just me. I couldn't let anyone into my life because I was scared of them bailing on me. I loved how Julie accepted me as family and Stacey being a lesbian herself opened my eyes to a world I've never experienced. I haven't faced any problems coming out to my family because I never really had one, but I'm finding it real hard for us lesbians to break down the door of Graham. Listen, I'm going to the studio later, so Nana's going to pick you up. Love you, bye. Love you, Kai. Bye. Max's football's actually going really good. He loves it. And he's really good and he's really dedicated. Someone's got to buy Nana a house. I oh, know. He's a professional. <laughs> Obviously, I told him, like, if you want to be a footballer, you need to make sure that you do well in school as well. Teachers never say anything like he's good, he's top of his class, like top of his classes. Probably, that's why. We well, bought, we've bought him up, probably. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you, let's be real. I actually was going to send you this on Facebook last night. Yeah. Let's have a look. Hold it. And look how cute he looks. Aww. Remember this little park we used to take him to? <laughs> right by the school. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, that was nice. Enjoyed that. Mm, that too was nice, wasn't it? At the end of the day, the way Mackay is now is a credit to you, Tiffany. I know you've had to help out with me, but you're the one fundamentally that's brought him up, Tiff. No, mm. you should be proud. I'm really proud. Mm, thanks. But well, I wouldn't have been able to do it without you, to be fair. You've supported me so much. I probably wouldn't have been at the level that I am now if you didn't come round and babysit. 
especially just to have your support, to have somebody to talk to because me and you were quite close and we always have been really close. So when I'm going through things, I can come and talk to you about stuff and that. So it's nice. Yeah, you know, you can tell me anything. How was your um, coffee with Emily? Yeah, we just had a coffee, really. Uh, she was? Yeah. It's nice, actually, because I was going through a bit of stuff and we, like, she was actually giving me some really good advice. What, advice. man trouble? Maybe, but I'm over it now. Good. Mm. Good girl, yeah. proud of you. I'm just focusing, like, on my music. I'm going to go studio tonight. Okay. So you're still cool to pick up mix? Yep, of course. Hey, what's up? Oh, yes? Right. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. So, what's been going on? Well, it's just been a bit, like, rough lately. You know, I've been currently staying with my friend Georgia just to take a break from the tension that's just built from my house with my auntie. Do you know what I mean? There's a huge contrast between me and my cousin. I just felt like growing up, I always felt like I've always tried to win their love. I've always had to try and do things to win their love. And then one slip up and that will bring everything back down. The communication is just terrible in the house. I think the only way that we're able to talk properly is when we're arguing. And yeah. it's just, it just got to a point where we just stopped talking. Have you kind of spoken to Auntie and kind of tried to kind of see her point of view? Yeah, I have. Like, when I talk to her, and I literally say, yeah, so how do you feel about this? She'll just say something like, I don't want to talk right now, I don't want to yeah. talk about this. I think as well, like, the, the kind of the time away, you know, will probably do you both good as well. So it's not just clearing, you know, your head, but it's kind of resetting you and Ali's relationship. What do you think you're going to do now? Do you think you're going to go back home, or do you think you're going to stay with Georgia for longer? I don't really know at this point. I feel like the time that I'm taking now with Georgia is healing me, but very slowly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? At this point, yeah. still needs a bit of work. So, you know. OK. You know, you know where I am. If you ever need to talk more, you know, I'm going to let you just kind of think on that and I'll catch you later, man. Yeah. All right. Bye. My cousin Lewis has definitely reminded me how my family situation is far better than most. I know he thinks I should go home now that I've had time to cool off, but I don't know what to do. What I know is, I just want to find some peace between me and my auntie. Well, what are you talking about? Forgetting all the times you was in my house. When I held you down and you never had nothing down to your last pounds. How you let another bitch come around? She can't do it like me. Just another rebound when the rose got peak. It was me that you found in so deep, so deep that we drowned. I really thought you were the one, but you told me I wouldn't move on. Any love that we had now is gonna need a real man, not a real con. Yeah. I like that. Whoa. <laughs> Are you sure it sounds all right, though? Yeah, no, it sounds sick. It goes perfect. This is a perfect way for me to move on. All right, so this is basically just going to be, like, a follow-up to In The End and Chief. Yeah. I mean, it's three songs about him. Yeah. It just actually helps a lot, especially if I'm having a, a shitty day and then I go and listen back. Yeah, because it is, like, therapy. Like, it's getting over it. It's like when you listen to another artist's song, if it's about something you're going through, you relate to How do you get it. over your heartbreaks? I just don't think about them. I lock them <laughs> off. <laughs> you just need to focus on your album. Mm. Focus on these collaborations that we've got planned. So like this one, working. I was thinking we could drop it after Tears on the Lanes. Yeah. Can we listen to Tears on the Lanes? Yeah. 
Lost little girl and she didn't even know She never knew any better She just wanted to be loved for you tell set up She used to be a go-getter when this room was gone around and made some chuck up And she just wanted to be loved for you tell set up Mex has just texted me. My mum's looking after him. I'm just going to go and quickly call her. All right. Cool. Two sex. Don't delete anything. <laughs> Hi, babe. Miss you. How was football? Okay. Well, get your PJs on and get into bed and I'll be there soon. I'll come and give you a kiss anyway, even if you're asleep. All right then. All right, be good boy. Love you, bye. I'm just so grateful to have my family in my life. I know I've had some ups and downs recently and without my mum, I literally wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. I love staying at George's house. I feel like it's really therapeutic to me, you know? I feel like I've had time to think things through. I know she's one of my best friends, but I know I can't stay in her house forever, even though it feels like a great escape. After seeing Bliss and my cousin Lewis, it's giving me that extra push of what I need to do in these rough circumstances. I feel prepared to go home, but do I confront my auntie and see what happens, or do I keep my head down and focus on my music? Only time will tell. It's hard. I've had the savings from before, but it's going down, isn't it? Oh, I'm pissed, man. I'm not going to lie. I'm just not trusting anyone. Did you speak to your auntie when you got back home? I'm comfortable right now. I just don't want any more fighting. I remember when I met you. Excuse me, I like colours. Thank you as a hot mate, so I'm not going to lie. I just did my thing. Yo, yo, welcome to the Gallum Sugar podcast. Let's get this conversation popping. You can listen to episode two of Yellow Sugar podcast, Know Your Roots, right now on BBC Sounds. It's driving you to do what you're doing now. Yeah. You have to do it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs>